thank you, Janet, very much for the kind introduction, and thank you for inviting me to speak to you here today. As the president of the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, I've had many opportunities to speak to municipal leaders and staff from across the province on a variety of important public policy matters. But I especially appreciate the opportunity to speak about social services. It touches a chord because of the important role these services play in our communities. You take care of our most vulnerable residents and attempt to provide them all with quality of life. Personally, I am passionate about seniors' issues. In fact, I'm chairman of the Board of Trustees of a, uh, a Home for the Aged in my community of, uh, of Dundas. And in fact, I have an affinity to it. When I first moved to my community 47 years ago, um, I lived around the corner, so I walked over and I said, are you hiring? And they said, what can you do? And I said, what do you want me to do? And, uh, and I started out uh, working at the Home for Asia while I was still in, uh, yeah, I know it's hard to believe, when I was in high school, so uh, uh, I'm back then. But uh, uh, I've had Asian grandparents, great-grandparents, and it's so important that we look after everyone but from my standpoint, looking after ourselves and our seniors as we progressively age has become a passion to myself and, uh, and, and a focus of uh, some of mine. Our population is aging, and that includes me, and that demographic shift is resulting in critical changes across our communities. The demands for senior services is growing and growing ever more complex. We see this across human services, from housing and homelessness to social assistance and long-term care homes. There's no doubt that our aging population and other economic challenges require new approaches. But to get there, we need to take a look at where we've been. It is apt that this conference is taking time to reflect on the 15 years that have passed since local services realignment. It is important to look at policy in this context by knowing how far we've come, we can set a new path forward. Remember, the world was a somewhat different place a mere 15 years ago. In 1998, Google had just launched. In that time, it's gone from a startup to its own entry in the Oxford English Dictionary. Back then, you'll recall Bill Clinton was enthralled in a monumental political scandal. Today, he's regarded by many as an elder statesman. In that same time period, our world population has grown by one billion people. So we know a lot can happen in 15 years, and certainly a lot has happened when it comes to human services. In some ways, just like Clinton and Google, it has been transformational. Municipalities have evolved and grown. Our municipal service system managers now exercise great leadership for the planning, funding, management, and delivery of social services in the province. This year in particular has been a busy year for OMSA members on all fronts. You've been reaching out to your communities to prepare a 10-year housing plan. You've been adjusting to the new child care funding formula and taking your communities through that challenge. You've been implementing some of the first steps towards social assistance transformation. Ontario is the only province where communities play such a major role in social services. Elsewhere, the provincial government delivers and fully funds these programs and simply advises all communities what will happen when. As you know, this has its challenges and at times, opportunities. As the order of government closest to the people, we can deliver services that are responsive to our community's unique needs. On the other hand, it also means that we are funding social services through the property tax levy. Property taxes were never intended to fund income redistribution programs such as welfare, housing and childcare so why is Ontario the only province or territory in Canada to continue to do so? I'm certain that there's some good reason, but so far it's escaped me. 
It was clear back then, and it has been proven true even today, that social services realignment was flawed as a matter of public policy. It gave us the functional and fiscal responsibility without the revenue and policy tools to do the job. Over the years, the questions have been hotly debated. How much responsibility and control should we have over these services and who should pay for them? Five years ago, the landmark Provincial Municipal Fiscal Service Delivery Review helped to address these questions. The fiscal review was good public policy and it continues to guide us today. Importantly, it outlined a schedule for the provincial upload of these costs. We at AMO must remain vigilant that program and policy changes do not translate into greater financial risk or impose added li liability for our municipalities. The fiscal review's most important contribution, however, was the fact that it put in place a collaborative provincial municipal approach to providing services. It recognized, truly recognized, the competence and hard work of our municipal service system managers on the ground. It acknowledged how essential you are to helping achieve provincial goals. Consolidated municipal service managers and district social services administration boards have risen to the challenge to provide effective, efficient, and responsive services to the residents of our communities. I want to thank every one of you for the tremendous job that you do as social and human service practitioners and system managers. Your frontline leadership is so valued and so appreciated. Leadership is critical as well on the policy making side of the equation. I am very proud of the independent and collaborative work that our two organizations, AMO and OMSA have made in recent years to provide sound and practical policy advice to the province. We have, in fact, doubled the output with our two organizations working together and developing an increasingly robust capacity on the policy front. We continue that work today, serving together at various policy tables from childcare modernization and housing to poverty reduction and social assistance transformation. Petra Wolfweiss, many of you in this room have participated in various policy tables and working groups, and your advice has made an impact in a number of areas. Together, we work in tandem to affect policy changes that would create strong, prosperous, and healthy communities, a shared goal of both municipal leaders and social service administrators. I want to thank the OMSA board and its staff for their leadership and hard work particularly your Executive Director, Kira Hynek, current President, Janet Menard, and past President, Dave Landers. I believe the growing strength of our relationship is demonstrated by AMO's presence and participation at this conference. Today, we will also hear from our Executive Director, Pat Vanini. Our Policy Director, Monica Turner, will take part in a panel discussion. It shows how closely our organizations are now working together on common goals, and are important to every one of you. And with us here also is Michael Jasek, our senior policy uh, advisor at uh, AMO, responsible for uh, this particular file. AMO's goal in providing policy advice to the province is to ensure that initiatives and innovativeness are well planned and adequate resource. We view shifts in policy through a number of municipal lens, looking for the answer to a few key questions. Is it responsive to community needs? Is it fair and equitable? Are the municipalities the best position to deliver these services? Is it fiscally sustainable? What is the geographic impact? How are each of our urban, rural, and northern communities affected? We review everything through these lands. It's not always easy to achieve consensus, but we are stronger when we do. So AMO aims to walk a path that is prudent, practical, and nonpartisan. I've met with the leaders of all the parties, met with their critics on the various files, and I really don't care who delivers it. 
it just has to be acceptable to you, the social services providers, and we, the municipalities, that either benefit from or will be responsible for that service. Our members of our board come from all political stripes. We are active, engaged, and opinionated. That's what makes us municipal leaders. Like your councils, they don't always agree, yet are respectful of the varied opinions. As such, AMO pursues policies that have broad support across the political spectrum. With OMSA, we share a number of key priorities. We both want to break down the silos that stand in the way of effective service delivery. The way the province is organized can hinder the ability of different ministries to work together. They often undertake different and sometimes competing initiatives with little regard for other programs. Integrating human services one was one of the great promises of the Fiscal Service Delivery Review of 2008. And unfortunately, this is a promise that remains unfulfilled at the provincial level. You in this room understand that change cannot wait for all the pieces to come together at the same time. We need to gather up the pieces and use them when they're here in front of us. Don't wait for that perfect moment. If I was to wait for the perfect moment in my life, actually, I'm still waiting for that to come together. You are forging ahead on the front line, making services more responsive and effective for your residents with human services integration. There are a number of pressing priorities right now. We have opportunities that cannot be squandered. Investments in our social infrastructure are needed. The first critical area is housing. There is much uncertainty and anxiety as social housing faces threats from all fronts. The end of federal operating agreements looms large. The federal government has made no further commitments to stay in the social housing field. The federal provincial housing agreements are in negotiation. Our message on housing is clear and this should be our collective voice and opinion. We need a long-term sustainable funding solution in order to ensure that appropriate social housing is, to provide it, is provided to all of those who are in need. Municipalities need certainty from our federal and provincial partners in this regard, and we need it now, not a promise, or the potential of a promise down the road. The second critical area is social assistance transformation. I have high hopes about what can be achieved. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link. It is in our collective interest to improve the lives and employment prospects of low-income Ontarians in our community. It is vital that this change be well-planned and resourced adequately. There can be no quiet downloading or sideloading where there is a subtle yet increased pressure on the property tax base to fund social assistances. As you know, where there are impacts too often, and I do mean too often, it's easy to forget about the people that are in need to fund those things that are recognized by the voters. Roads, sidewalks, culverts, it's too easy just to turn the blind eye to those in need, and they deserve our support, and I thank you for it. On poverty reduction, much has been achieved, but more is needed. We wait in anticipation for the province's renewed poverty reduction strategy, one that AMO and OMSA are helping to shape. AMO supports the Ontario government's vision to modernize childcare. There is much work to be done to improve childcare outcomes for families in Ontario. And in closing, on all fronts, we need to provide sound public policy advice that will support our residents and strengthen our communities. Collectively, I have great faith that we can do this and we can achieve more by working together than we ever could alone. You have the understanding and expertise that can drive innovative solutions to serve Ontarians in need. We need that insight and we need your advice. 
when we arrive at practical recommendations that will improve social policy on Ontario, the message sent to other orders of government is very difficult to ignore, and every person residing in Ontario will benefit. You owe it to them, and you owe it to yourselves. Thank you. Enjoy your conference.